The Unlikely Rebirth Eleanor Westwood was once a woman of warmth and laughter, her home echoing with the joyful sounds of her two children, Emily and Thomas, and her beloved husband, Charles. Mm -hmm. They lived in a charming old house in a small coastal town, where the ocean breeze whispered promises of endless tomorrows. However, fate dealt Eleanor a cruel hand. One rainy evening, as Charles was driving the children home from school, their car skidded on the wet road and collided with a truck. The accident claimed the lives of Emily, Thomas, and Charles, leaving Eleanor with an unbearable emptiness. The days that followed were a blur of grief and despair. Eleanor retreated into herself. The laughter that once filled her home were placed by a haunting silence. Friends and neighbors offered their condolences, but words felt hollow against the magnitude of her loss. She wandered through her days in a fog, the weight of her grief pressing down on her like a heavy shroud. Chapter 1, The Unlikely Encounter Years passed, and Eleanor found herself living a solitary existence. She moved to a small apartment in a city, away from the memories that haunted her seaside home. Her life became a series of monotonous routines, each day blending into the next. She found solace in tending to a small garden on her balcony, the only spark of life in her otherwise bleak world. One evening, as she was watering her plants, she heard a commotion from the alley below. Curious, she peered over the railing and saw a young woman, barely more than a girl, arguing with a man who looked every bit the part of a thug. The girl, bruised and desperate, broke free and ran, disappearing into the shadows. Eleanor felt a pain of concern for the girl. On an impulse she couldn't explain, she decided to follow her. She descended the stairs and stepped into the alley, her heart pounding. After a few minutes of searching, she found the girl huddled behind a dumpster, shivering and scared. Are you all right, dear? Eleanor asked gently. The girl looked up, her eyes filled with fear and defiance. I'm fine. Just leave me alone. Eleanor saw herself in the girl, the same look of despair and hopelessness. Please, come inside. You look like you could use some food and a place to rest. After a moment's hesitation, the girl nodded. Eleanor led her back to her apartment and offered her a warm meal and a bed for the night. As the girl ate ravenously, Eleanor learned her name was Lily, and she was a runaway escaping an abusive foster home. Chapter 2, Building a New Family Lily stayed with Eleanor for several weeks, her presence slowly breaking through the older woman's shell of grief. Eleanor found herself caring for Lily as if she were her own child, and in return, Lily began to trust Eleanor, opening up about her troubled past. Eleanor decided to help Lily find a more permanent solution. She contacted social services, determined to ensure Lily wouldn't be forced back into a harmful environment. With her help, Lily was placed in a supportive group home, but she continued to visit Eleanor regularly. Their bond grew stronger, filling the void in Eleanor's heart. One day, while going through some old papers, Eleanor stumbled upon a document she had forgotten about, a hospital report from many years ago. It was from a time when she had been young and desperate, having terminated a pregnancy she believed would ruin her life. The report mentioned complications, and a follow-up letter indicated that the procedure might not have been as successful as she had been told. A spark of hope ignited in Eleanor, could it be possible that the child she thought she had lost was still alive? She decided to investigate, reaching out to the hospital and the adoption agencies. Chapter 3, Uncovering the Past Eleanor's inquiries led her down a twisting path of red tape and forgotten records. With Lily's support, 
She persisted, driven by a newfound purpose. Months of relentless searching finally led her to an orphanage in a neighboring state. She learned that a baby girl had been placed there around the same time as her supposed abortion. The child's records indicated a frail infant who had grown into a resilient young woman, bouncing between foster homes and orphanages. Eleanor's heart raced as she arranged a visit to the orphanage. She was led to a room where children played and laughed, the echoes of her past blending with the present. The caretaker introduced her to a young woman who had recently aged out of the system. Eleanor, this is Mia, the caretaker said, gesturing towards a slender girl with strikingly familiar features. Mia had Eleanor's eyes, the same deep, soulful gaze. Tears welled up in Eleanor's eyes as she approached Mia. Hello, Mia. My name is Eleanor. I think... I think I might be your mother. Mia looked at Eleanor, confusion and curiosity mingling in her expression. My mother? I've been in the system all my life. I never knew my parents. Eleanor reached out, taking Mia's hands in hers. I believe there's been a mistake. I was told I lost you, but it seems that wasn't the case. I've been searching for you, hoping to find you. Chapter 4, Rebuilding Together. Mia was skeptical at first, but as Eleanor shared her story in the documents she had uncovered, the pieces began to fit together. Slowly, a tentative bond formed between them, built on shared pain and the hope of new beginnings. <coughs> Eleanor invited Mia to stay with her, offering her a home and the motherly love she had longed for. Together, they navigated the challenges of reconnecting and healing old wounds. <coughs> Lily, now a frequent visitor, became like a sister to Mia, the three of them forming an unconventional but loving family. Eleanor's apartment, once a place of solitude, now buzzed with life. The garden on her balcony flourished under Mia's care, the vibrant blooms a symbol of their shared journey towards healing. Epilogue, a new dawn. Eleanor's life had come full circle in the most unexpected way. She had lost everything, but found a new family in the unlikeliest of circumstances. The grief of her past still lingered, but it was tempered by the joy of her present. As she sat in her garden, watching Mia and Lily laugh and plant new flowers, Eleanor felt a profound sense of peace. She had started again, not by erasing her past, but by embracing it and allowing it to guide her towards a future filled with love and hope. The echoes of lost laughter were now joined by new voices, creating a symphony of resilience and rebirth. Eleanor Westwood had found her way back to life, proving that even in the face of unimaginable loss, there was always the possibility of new beginnings. <laughs>